The ST7 camera is set up not to take uh, color images, but instead just black and white pictures. The reason that is, is because if you put a color filter wheel in between the lens and the camera, then we can't achieve focus with this telephoto lens. So we're only going to be able to take black and white pictures with this one, but color pictures with other CCD cameras. The mounting screw right here is a quarter 20 bolt. So that's a quarter inch, 20 threads per inch. I almost fell down there. And what you'll want to do as uh, your team is uh, locate the telescope. I think it is number seven. And it has a mounting bolt on here. That's a quarter 20 bolt. And so you mount that right on the back of, of this uh, telescope. So what you'll use is the hand paddle to locate the objects in the sky, such as Betelgeuse, Rigel, and M42, so on, and uh, use your telescope computer to locate those objects, and then manually move it over so that the image uh, in your CCD camera is the one that you desire for your team. Okay, for one of the outdoor labs, we're going to use this ST7 camera. It has a parallel port, and here's the power port down here at the bottom of this cart. We're going to roll this cart outside to the gravel pad and mount this using this quarter 20 bolt on the back of an 8 inch telescope. I'll show you that in a minute. You can hear the fan blowing right here and this is telling you what kind of, cam of camera it is. It's an ST7E. Once you have it connected to the computer on this cart, you want to load up a program called CC CCD Ops. One of the first things you want to do with this program called CCD Ops is look under the miscellaneous section and check on this section that says graphics com setup. For the ST7 you want to make sure that it says the parallel port. Then go over here to the camera menu and select establish com link. What that'll do is it'll establish a communications link between the computer and the CCD camera. The next thing you can do is say camera and grab. That's the first menu op option here at the top. You could select a one second exposure or a 30 second exposure or whatever. And the first, if you want to just image for a dark frame, you want to say none. If you want to take your dark frame, you would also say uh, just dark frame only. We we'll probably not use this also feature that's right there. So if I take a, a uh, just a light frame, the image is going to look like this right here. After one second, it downloads and you can see the raw image right there. So right now I'm just really looking through the lens cap at a light source, so that's not really a real star pattern that you're seeing here. Now if you look down here on the lower right hand side, it tells you what the temperature of the chip is. And right now we don't really have the temperature uh, cooling, we don't have the uh, Peltier cooler cooling down the chip yet. And what we, do is need, what we do need to do is turn that on so that the chip can begin to cool down. The way to do that is to go to camera and then setup and up here it says temp temperature regulation and you want to turn that on, uh, to active. Once you begin to do that you'll notice that uh, the power down here at the bottom goes to 100 percent and the chip begins to cool. The reason you want to do that is because the cooler the chip is the less noise you will see in your images. So we're, we're going to want to ch take some um, images and again the way that you do that is you go camera, grab, and um, I'm not going to save changes to this one. To take an image, you want the dark um, frame setting to none. And at the end of our observing session, we're going to say dark frame only and take 10 of those. All right, let's see if there's a way to um, take uh, several images all at once. Okay, to take multiple images of the same object, what you do is you go down here to grab again. And then you, down at the bottom of this window that opens up, you will want to select auto grab instead of just take a single frame you want to auto grab instead. When you click on that it will ask you what you want the prefix of the file to be. For example you can set the name of that file to be M42 and so every image in that directory will then have the prefix M42. Then you click save and it doesn't really begin the image uh, collection yet. What you have to do is tell it how many images you want and for how long and what kind of file format you want to use. We're going to be using the FITS file format for all of our images.